In this short video, we'll have a quick review of the anatomy of the neck, which we met in our first dissection. So what we'll review will be the fascial layers that surround the neck, the key triangles formed by certain muscles and what those muscles are, and remind ourselves of the contents of those triangles. So we're going to demonstrate these structures using a 3D anatomy model from Complete Anatomy. If you recall, in our first dissection, we removed the skin, which is highlighted here. And this brought us onto our first of our cervical fascial layers, the superficial cervical fascial layer, which is in yellow and now removed. This superficial cervical fascial layer will be of variable thickness in different individuals. It will contain fat, superficial cervical lymph nodes, and of course, the very superficially placed platysma, which is highlighted here. Uh, of which we have two, one on either side of the midline. Some of you may have dissected out the platysma as a separate layer, while some of you may have the platysma still within the superficial cervical fascia as you reflected it back with the skin. We then come to the first of the deep cervical fascial layers, the investing layer. As you can see, this completely encircles the neck like a collar, splitting to uh, surround the sternocleidomastoid muscles anteriorly and the trapezius muscles uh, posteriorly. Variable amounts of this investing layer of fascia may still remain on your cadavers um, and other areas you may have been able to, to clear it off to see the structures more clearly. So we've removed it off this model and I'm highlighting now the two sternocleidomastoid muscles either side of the midline. We also have the large trapezius muscle or the trapezius muscles which are towards the uh, posterior aspect of the neck. And these are two important muscles that help to form uh, key triangles of our neck. The other muscles to consider are these strap-like muscles or the infrahyoids which I've just highlighted in yellow, which sit below the level of the hyoid bone. So if we zoom in a little bit closer, uh, the hyoid bone sits in the midline and we have some muscles that run above it, or suprahyoids, just highlighted in yellow here. Uh, and then a series of muscles, as I said, that run down from the hyoid bone inferiorly, which are our infrahyoids or strap muscles. Now we don't need to know all of the names of these infra and suprahyoid muscles, but there are a couple just to highlight to you um, with regards to some of the triangles that are within the neck. Let's remind ourselves of the important triangle in the anterior part of the neck, which is our anterior triangle, of which we have two on either side of the midline. The boundary of the anterior triangle is formed laterally by the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, an imaginary midline in the mid-sagittal plane and the inferior border of the mandible. Within the anterior triangle, there are a number of smaller sub-triangles. One that we've highlighted is the carotid triangle being drawn here. This is formed by uh, the sternocleidomastoid, but the superior belly of omohyoid and the posterior belly of the digastric form the other boundaries. And within this carotid triangle, we find some important neurovascular structures, which you will hopefully have identified on your cadavers. Coming a little bit more laterally, um, we can see the posterior triangle, which you will perhaps not have dissected out uh, very much on your cadavers. The posterior triangle has a number of key structures that communicate between the neck and the upper limb. Its boundaries are formed by the sternocleidomastoid, the trapezius muscle, and the clavicle inferiorly. We have the inferior belly of omohyoid that runs across the posterior triangle, and a number of muscles such as the scalene muscles which form the floor of this triangle. Some of the important structures within this triangle, which we'll see on zooming in slightly, are the subclavian vessels, the artery just behind and the vein just in front. And these pass in relation to the anterior scalene muscle and then enter into the upper limb. Taking a closer look at these subclavian vessels, we can see the scalene muscle, the anterior scalene muscle at the top right hand corner, and how the subclavian vein runs in front of and the subclavian artery runs behind. We also have uh, emerging between the 
anterior scalene and the middle scalene, the trunks of the brachial plexus. And the final structure just to mention is the phrenic nerve, which runs over the anterior surface of the anterior scalene and down into the thorax, which we can see again on the top right hand corner of this image. Returning to the view of the anterior area of the neck, we can see the thyroid gland tucked in in the midline just behind the infrahyoid muscles, along with the cartilages of the larynx. If we remove the sternocleidomastoid muscles um, off each side of the neck, then we can uh, get a clearer view of some of the infrahyoid muscles, uh, including the ormohyoid, which I've just removed here on the left. Uh, just put it back in. And we have the superior belly that we can see here on either side and the inferior bellies, which run into the posterior triangle. A closer look to the right hand side of the neck, we can see the important vascular structures, the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein lying just lateral. If we take a look at this same anatomy on the cadaver, looking at the right side of the neck within the carotid triangle, we can see uh, these structures. So here we have the common carotid artery lying medially, the internal jugular vein more laterally, and behind the two uh, sitting posteriorly in the carotid sheath would be our vagus nerve, which we see there. So on this final image of the neck, we can see the carotid sheath and uh, its neurovascular contents in cross section. We can also see the other two uh, deep cervical fascial layers, the pretracheal fascia lying anteriorly, uh, which contains the thyroid gland and aerodigestive structures. And not forgetting uh, this fascial layer continues or is known as the buccopharyngeal fascia as it runs behind the, uh, the pharynx in the esophagus. And the prevertebral fascia is the fascia that uh, surrounds the vertebra and some of the associated muscles at the back of the neck. And between the prevertebral fascia and the buccopharyngeal fascia lies a deep neck space known as the retropharyngeal space. And this is an area where infection and abscesses may collect. And given the inferior extent of the retropharyngeal space passes into the thorax and the mediastinum, there is a risk that infections here can also spread uh, into these areas of the chest. So that concludes this video uh, reviewing the anatomy of the neck. I hope that you found it helpful and we will continue our dissection further to explore the anatomy of the larynx and the pharynx in our second dissection.